Welcome to the Traders Help Desk Online Video Collection. This is Trey Dumian on uh, Actually Gold. And uh, let me explain the entry for those of you that don't know the methodology. We had a magenta peak here pulled back to the ATR here. That gave us our entry. Um, if I had the easy money indicator on the screen, you would see that we had a entry generated right before it touched the ATR. I've already taken Clipper 1 looking at uh, Clipper 2 right now. And we're going to see if we can get it. We've had the exact same setup over on the NASDAQ as well. And I'm going to show that to you. This is the setup that was uh, on the NASDAQ. Again, you're risking about 10 ticks. Now, this is on a 12-minute chart, so 10 ticks would be acceptable to me. Uh, the one on the NASDAQ um, had 10 ticks of risk. The one on gold had 10 ticks of risk. Both of these are from a 12-minute chart which is why I would let a 10 tick ride on the NASDAQ. The typical uh, stop on the NASDAQ with a three minute chart is actually nine ticks. So I added one extra tick, um, but I'm in on a 12 minute chart. Now I have opted to trade the 12 minute because that's where the setup came in. We saw uh, actually diverging volume um, as it was pulling back to the ATR, I already know that my higher time frames are actually in an uptrend on gold. Um, if you remember correctly, yesterday in the live trading room, I said I wouldn't touch gold because it was in congestion. It broke out of the congestion last night, so and it broke out of congestion to the upside. So all I'm doing is actually trading into the higher time frame after a substantial up movement. Now, the ADX is what I rely on to tell me when there's a substantial up movement. Just got Clipper 2. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the ADX is actually what I rely on to tell me when I have had a substantial up move. And then it also tells me where will price pull back to, which is another key component. So I knew that it would pull back to the ATR. It did and it did so on the virgin volume and then it gave me a close in my direction so you took 20 ticks off at clipper one you took 40 ticks at clipper two and now you are heading for clipper three which will be an additional 60 ticks now this is on gold again if i show you the nasdaq you're getting exactly the same setup magenta peak pull back to the atr and then an increase. So um, let's see what we're going to do on gold. We're just a few ticks away from Clipper 3 right now. The NASDAQ is moving a lot slower than gold, but gold is uh, very volatile. One thing I'm looking at, it's is the volume increasing on the highs and right now it is the problem is you did have this volume spike over here so that's going to cause divergence because we are now making higher highs but it's on lower volume unless you get uh, a boatload of volume in at the last of the bar we're about three ticks away from clipper three five ticks and right now my stop would be at Clipper 2, so if it came back to Clipper 2, I would be out of this. We did get a volume spike over on the 3 minute. Volume spikes normally will retrace.
again the Nasdaq's moving a little bit slower uh, just a couple of more ticks and we'll be out of this one on the 12 minute it is retracing the wide bar on the three minute you can see that there was a volume spike uh, a few more ticks and we'll be out it's already cl completed a 50% retracement but again with volume spikes they normally do retrace so two more ticks will be out there we're out so basically we locked in a hundred ticks over on gold it was 20 plus 40 plus 40 again so that's a hundred total ticks on this and our total risk was 10 ticks per contract which was about 30 ticks now we're still in the Nasdaq so we'll see what happens on this one as you can see the Nasdaq's moving a lot slower than the gold is So on this one, I'm going to pause my screen, and if we get Clipper 2, then I'll come back on, and we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, you can see we're almost at Clipper 2 now, about three ticks away. As soon as it hits Clipper 2, I'm going to move my stop to Clipper 1. Right now, my hard stop on the trade on the NASDAQ is actually at 25.14, which is really one tick below this low. We did make a low, followed by a higher high, so I feel comfortable moving my stop. So I'm typically at break even at this point, but since we made this low right here, I went ahead and moved it to one tick below that low. While we're waiting on the NASDAQ, I wanted to show you what the easy money would look like on gold. You can see you got the yellow dot here. Um, just as it was pulling back to the ATR, of course, you did have diverging volume. You had a red dot that indicated where your stop would be. You have a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio calculated into the easy money indicator which gave you this green dot. Once the green dot is actually touched, that turns into a big green dot to let you know that you actually achieved your profit target. And it's very important to remember when you're using easy money that you're trading into a higher time frame. So I don't trade a single time frame. I do trade multiple time frames and I'm always trading into a higher time frame because that's where your high probability trades exist. Again, I'm just going to pause my screen because the NASDAQ is moving pretty slow. Now this morning at 7.45 we do have a, uh, the minimum bid rate for the Euro which is not expected to change. However, I would not want to be at the market at 745, so this trade has to end before 745. We also have an ECB press conference at 830. We don't have a lot on the U.S. market side. Um, we have crude oil inventories at 1030. We do have a FOMC member speaking at 930. And we have revised non-farm productivity at 8.30. Those are not high volatility market reports unless, of course, you're trading uh, crude, in, in which case it would be. Since we only have at most uh, maybe about five more minutes in this trade I've moved my stop up to 2516 so it guarantees me a one to two risk to reward ratio 
so if it comes down here to 2516 I will be out and very simply it's because we are expecting the uh, minimum bid rate on the euro which may not move the markets at all um, I just don't like being in the market uh, when there's a major market report coming out I'd rather protect my profits in that scenario Okay, we're about one tick away from exit. We've already taken um, four points out. I'm sorry, five points on one contract. We've still got two remaining contracts in. I will exit this trade either way within the next three minutes again because we do have a 745 minimum bid rate on the euro and the US markets do respond <laughs> to the euro Okay, I'm going to go ahead and exit the uh, NASDAQ. I do not want to be in the market. So, I'm filled at 25.17. So, we made five points on one contract. And then on the remaining two contracts, we made uh, 12 points. So, total on gold it was a hundred ticks and on the NASDAQ it was 17 points not bad for a morning of trading 